Hi, uh, welcome to the Sunday sermon. It is um, January, I'm sorry, December 31st, 2023, and it is uh, New Year's Eve, so I trust you have a, a great New Year's Day. We're going to talk a little bit about that today, about uh, facing 2024, and uh, um, so let's pray. Lord, we just pray, God, for those that are traveling, for those, Lord, with uh uh, physical needs for those with financial needs for those with spiritual needs lord you know who they are uh, we lift them up to you we pray lord for your hand to be upon 2024 so many things going on we pray lord that you would uh, uh, intervene on those hard things that we're going to face and we pray for our election lord that you would have your hand upon this world this nation uh, this community this church lord our homes that you would uh, just bless them, Lord, as we look into your word today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Um, I have kind of a personal lesson today. Um, next week, we're going to start a, a study in Jeremiah. But we've been going through the book of Job in the middle of the week. And if you either are here or you listen to um, that study in Job 24 or Job chapter 6 and 7, uh, there was a, a particular two verses that really sparked this particular message. And in Job chapter 7, um, verse 6, Job says, My days are swifter than a weaver's shuttle and are spent without hope. <laughs> oh, remember that my life is a breath and my eye will never again see good. So Job is approaching his future with, in his words, no hope. He's approaching a future in which he says with his own words, my eye will never again see good. Well, we know that that's not true about Job. In fact, if you look at the end of Job, he lived another 120 years in health and happiness and blessings from God. And in fact, God said your, your last 120 years on earth or your next 120 years on earth will be better than the years before. And so Job is, um, without all the information that he uh, doesn't know about his future, he makes an assumption that it's just going to get uh, no better. And then he enters it with no hope, and he enters it with uh, uh, depression and darkness, even wishing death to come, uh, not realizing that there's something great for him right around the corner. Um, so it led me to think about my particular uh, view of 2024. Um, uh, we have an election year, and that's an always a dividing thing in our nation. Um, we have persecution of Christians in Nigeria. Uh, over the holidays, there were between 100 and 150 Christians that were murdered on Christmas Eve. You're not going to hear much about it in the, in the news um, because we're, Christianity is not respected enough for anybody to care, it seems like. Um so we look at 2024, and, and sometimes, it, you know, I'll, I'll read those words of Job again, especially the last one, where he says, um, my eye will never see again, see good. And boy, we just wonder, you know, is, is this ever going to turn around? Is God going to bring a revival? Is, 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 is our nation going to be one nation under God again? Are we ever going to stop? Uh, this hatred uh, and, uh, and wars and rumors of wars. <laughs> Is the Lord coming back? And maybe there are personal things. There's, there's some personal things that, that I know uh, we're going to face in 2024 personally that, that I'm, are going to be challenging, not looking forward to them. Um, and, and so um, coming uh, out of a couple of years that have been a little bit some some struggles in different areas, um, you can ask yourself, man, am I ever going to see good again? Is it ever going to be 
you know, sometimes we like to live in the past and, oh man, it goes back in the good old days. So my question to you is, is do you enter 2024 with a sense of hope? And so what we're going to do uh, with this lesson is, is me not giving you a pep talk, uh, uh, maybe giving myself a pep talk, um, but letting the verses give you the truth of the matter. See, Job's issue was he didn't know what was coming. We can look at Job and say, Job, come on, hang in there. It's going to get better. You're going to have 120 years of just bliss and happiness and joy. What about us? What's the future hold for the United States of America? What does the future hold for Lee Grand, California? What does the future hold for Bible Christian Church? What does the future hold for the Flanagan household? Uh, and to that questions, all of them, I have no idea. I'm not a prophet. Uh, but I do know certain things about the future. So let's turn, if you will, to 1 Peter chapter 1. And I'm going to walk you through a series of verses. I'm going to read them to you. And, and if you are here live for this lesson on New Year's Eve, they'll, 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 these will be printed out. Um, if you're listening online, um, as I share these verses with you, there's so many uh, that I'm not going to delay so you can find them, but I encourage you to, to write them down and then go back and look at them again. Um, but we'll start in 1 Peter uh, chapter 1. And it says this, verse 3, 1 Peter 1, verse 3. Uh, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who according to his abundant mercy has begotten us again to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead, to an inheritance incorruptible, undefiled, that fadeth not away, reserved in heaven for you. So in these verses, and if you'll, we're going to go back and forth to 1 Peter quite a bit. So, so stay here for a second with me. But look at verse number um, three, that God has begotten us to a living hope. Job said very clearly that he had no hope for the future. He did not expect to ever see another good day. Um, but we have a living hope. I cannot predict what's going to happen in 2024. But I can with full assurance tell you the Lord is coming back someday. That we have a, a blessed hope in the future. That whatever lasts, whatever trials we might be facing, um, someday I'm going to be absent from this body and I'm going to be present with the Lord. Uh, but more than that, you know, you could call that a future hope. We'll talk about that more in a second. But I like that, that phrase that we have a living hope because of the past in which it says Jesus arose from the dead because of his death, burial, and resurrection from the dead, the gospel itself, that gives us a living hope that the, the Jesus who was alive is coming back. And so this, this hope is not a hope that's so far in the future until we get there, it's just going to be miserable. No, it's a living hope. It's a hope that we can have right now in fact, we are, are um, guaranteed of that. And so uh, are you living life in the context of a living hope, knowing that, you know, the worst thing that's ever going to happen to us is that we're going to die. And the best thing that's ever going to happen to you as a Christian is you're going to die. It, it just, that's the hope that we have, that whatever the pundits tell us or whatever the predictors say. Um, I read a little article this week of the solar flares that are coming in 2024 and, 
and everybody's building bunkers. And you know what? Jesus is coming. So, so we want to f- live in fear over the things that we don't know that are coming, but not live in hope over the one thing that we know for sure is coming. Jesus Christ. So I want you to, to, to look at this hope in three areas today. I want you to look at the hope you have because of the past, the hope we have in the present, and finally the hope we have in the future. So verse number five in First Peter chapter one, we have this living hope reserved in heaven for you, verse 5, who are kept by the power of God through faith for salvation, ready to be revealed in the last time. So we'll get to the last time in a second. But right now we want to look at this idea that our reservation in heaven, our living hope is being kept by the power of God. See, because our sins are taken care of. They're as far as the east is from the west. The Bible says that, therefore, there is no more condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. So so all of our sins, past, present, and future, are under the blood and, and taken care of by God himself. And so because of that, that, that our past has allowed us to have this present hope, Uh, Ephesians 2.11 says, Therefore remember that you once Gentiles in the flesh who are called uncircumcision by what is called the circumcision, made in the flesh by hands, that at the time you were without Christ, that's the past. There was a time when you were without Christ, being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers from the covenants of promise, having no hope. And without God in the world, but now, Ephesians 2.13 says, In Christ, you who were once far off have been brought near by the blood of Christ. There was a time in which we had no hope. If you are not a Christian today, and the Lord was to return, you would be left with no hope. But as long as you are still breathing, that's why the Lord hasn't returned yet. He's not willing that any should perish. Uh, So he's long-suffering. Titus 2.11 says, For by the grace of God that brings salvation has appeared to all men, teaching us that denying ungodliness, worldly lusts, we should live soberly, righteously, godly in this present age, looking for the blessed hope, the glorious appearing of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ, who gave himself for us that he might redeem us from the lawless deeds and purify for himself his own special people zealous of good works. And that verse 13 of Titus 2, he gave himself for us that he might redeem us, buy us back. See, we were uh, uh, dead in our trespasses and sin. The wages of sin is death, separation from God. The gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. And he has redeemed us. That's Past. Romans 8 24 says we are saved in this hope. Notice that 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 hope of Christ, that glorious appearing. We just celebrated in, in, in at Christmas time that, that he came to earth and he who knew no sin became sin for us that we might become the righteousness of God. So we are saved in this hope. He had gave himself to redeem us. And once we had no hope, Titus. Again, Ephesians 2, 13, but now in Christ Jesus, you were once were far off and been brought near to God. Your past doesn't have to be riddled with regret. Accept and receive the forgiveness of God. Um, Psalm 78, 7, that they may set their hope in God and not forget the works of God, but keep his commandments. See, when we look back, our lives. And you may look back on 2023 with with joy. You may look back on 2023 with regrets. But look back and realize that even the mistakes, the trials, the sins of your life, 
they are, they're under the blood of Christ. As far as the east is from the west, if you confess your sins, the Bible says he's faithful and just to forgive your sins, cleanse you from all unrighteousness. 1 John 1, 9, Psalm 147, 11, the Lord takes pleasure in those who fear him, in those who hope in his mercy. See, we have mercy from God, not going to receive the punishment we deserve. And sometimes we enter uh, our life with, with a little bit of hopelessness because we are feeling condemned, feeling like our sin is weighing on us. If you're struggling with any sins in your life, the guilt of it, the shame of it, uh, the answer is always simple. Repent, confess your sins to God. He is faithful and just to forgive you. And, and make 2024 a time when, when that sin is, is, is gone. Pray for the strength of God to walk you through it and, and lay aside every weight and that sin that, that so easily besets you. God will help with you. You don't want that sin in your life. God doesn't want that sin in your life. So together, your, your surrender to Christ, that's your hope. See, the hope of your past is that you, once having no hope, now know for sure that no one will pluck you out of the Father's hand and that your sins are completely forgiven you. What a blessing that is. Well, what about the present? Uh, look at staying in 1 Peter 1 in verse 6. In this you greatly rejoice. What are we rejoicing? We rejoice in the fact that, that, that our salvation is being kept by the power of God. Um, even though for a little while, if need be, you've been greed with various trials, that your genuineness of your faith being much more precious than gold that perishes, though it's tested by fire, may be found to the praise, honor, and glory at the revelation of Jesus Christ. Whom having not seen you love, though now you don't see him, yet believing you rejoice with joy, inexpressible and full of glory. So we are joyful in verse 6 because of what God has done in our past. We rejoice over the, the birth of the baby Jesus and, and his sinless life in which he uh, became the Lamb of God that takes away the sins of the world. He came to seek and save that which is lost. He died on the cross, the perfect sacrifice. He was buried with our sins, rose again the third day without him, 1 Corinthians 15. That's the gospel. And that whoever believes in him will never perish, but have everlasting life. And because we've trusted in him, our hope is in him. And those who had no hope now have a living hope of the future. But the present can be riddled with trials and testings and, and grieving and struggles and sickness and poverty, and all kinds of things. Well, this is where that living hope gets us through. Our past is taken care of. Our future is bright. But what about today? What about 2024? The Bible says in John 10, 10, I come to give you life and to give you to you more abundantly. But the thief, the Satan comes to rob and to steal. Well, here's what it says in Romans 12, 10, be kindly affection one to another with brotherly love and honor, giving preference to one another, not lagging in diligence, fervent in spirit, serving the Lord, rejoicing in hope, patience, and tribulation, continuing steadfastly in prayer, distributing to the needs of the saints given to hospitality. So this, this knowledge that our past is taken care of and our future is bright, then we can be steadfast in prayer, rejoicing in that hope that allows us uh, to serve others. It brings us to a place of service to pay back and share with others. The story, Romans 15, 13, may the God of hope fill you with joy and peace in believing that you may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. So this, this living hope, can bring you joy, abounding in hope, 
by the Holy Spirit. You see, it's a spiritual thing. Uh, me telling you, hey, cheer up, have hope, that, that doesn't cut it. This is a, a getting into the Word, reading these verses, letting them soak in, and praying to God that the Holy Spirit would do a work in you, that there be a miraculous joy, a peace that passes all understanding. Look at 1 John 4.13. I do not want you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning those who have fallen asleep, lest you sorrow as those with no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so God will bring with him those who sleep in Jesus. Not only does it bring us uh, the, the, the desire to serve, it brings us the, the joy that passes uh, anything inexpressible, but it brings us a peace that passes all understanding. When our loved ones pass and go into heaven, we know we'll see them again. And we don't live, as, as First Thessalonians, First Thessalonians 4 says, as those who have no hope. We don't sorrow. See, we, it's, it's a different. We can live this present world, even if everything goes uh, awry around us, like Peter. We can fix our eyes on Christ and walk on water while the storms go. Titus 2.11, we read it earlier, but it, it has to do with the present also. It says, for the grace of God that brings salvation has appeared to all men, teaching us that we deny ungodliness and worldly love, lust. We should live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present age, looking for the blessed hope and the glorious appearing of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ. See, it brings us stability. We live soberly, godly, righteously. Uh, not well, living in the, in the flesh. And, and you know, the, the, the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. But we have victory in Christ over those worldly lusts. Hebrews 10, 23. Let us hold fast the confession of our hope without wavering. Hang on to that hope. For he who promised is faithful. The reason we hang on to it is not because of what the promise is, but because of who promised it. It's impossible for God to lie. Continuing in verse 24 of Hebrews 10, and let us consider one another in order to stir up loves, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as is the manner of some, but exhorting one another and so much more as you see the day approaching. Uh, it not only brings us direction and peace and joy, it brings us fellowship. Uh, we gather together on Sundays and Wednesdays, and, and we encourage one another. We exhort one another. And God says, even more as things get a little more hectic around us, we've got to gather more because we have like-minded. We're all trying to grab on to this living hope that is in Christ Jesus. We've got to continually remind each other of them. Colossians 1.27 says, to them God willed to make known what are the riches of his glory, the mystery among the Gentiles, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. This is the present hope that Jesus Christ lives in you. If you are born again and you have given your life and surrendered it to Jesus Christ, repented of your sin and given your life to him, uh, then, then he lives within you through the power of the Holy Spirit. Him we preach, it says in verse 28 of Colossians 1, warning every man, teaching every man in all wisdom, that we may present every man perfect in Christ. To this end I labor, striving according to his working, which works in me mightily. This Christ in me, in the present time, I have that joy, I have that peace, I have that fellowship, and now I have that purpose. I know that my purpose on earth is to present this truth, to, to preach Christ. Um, it's not to be perfect, uh, but it's to strive to live a holy life. Um, and, and But what now? What do I do now that I've already blown it? What do you do now that, that your, the sins of your past are, are evident to all? Well, you just, I don't know anything else, but just keep sharing the grace and mercy of God. It's what it's all about. Repent, stop the sin, and keep on preaching. Look at 1 John 3, 2. Beloved, now we are children of God. It has not yet been revealed what we shall be, but we know that when he is revealed, we'll be like him, 
and will see him as he is. And everyone who has this hope in him purifies himself just as he is pure. And so there's a motivation here that Christ is within you. And we know that someday we'll be like him. So that motivates us to try to be like him today. Be holy for he is holy. Everyone who has this hope in him purifies himself. You're forgiven of your sins. They're washed under the blood. As far as the east is from the west. But don't you want to be more like Christ? That's our strive for 2024. So there's a living hope that gives us a purpose, that gives us fellowship and peace and joy uh, and and uh, direction and service and and uh, Pastor Rick Reagan in, in Planada, he's preaching a message today um, on the idea of of uh, searching for God with your whole heart, seeking God with your whole heart, and that should be the goal in 2020. Be more like Christ. It's going to be trials. There's going to be struggles, but there's a hope. That lies within us, the hope of our past, knowing that our sins are forgiven, the hope of the present, knowing that Christ lives within us and gives us the strength to have victory over sin and to serve him. Oh, but none of that compares to what's coming up in the future. Look at verse 9 of 1 Peter chapter 1. Receiving the end of your faith, the salvation of your souls what's in the future or there's no darkness no no crying no tears no sadness and and just presence of christ in the new heaven and the new earth it's a guarantee the future is undeniably going to be greater than anything we have ever experienced and known eye has not seen ear has not heard what he has prepared titus 1 1 Paul says, a bondservant of God and an apostle of Jesus Christ, according to the faith of God's elect and the acknowledgement of the truth, which uh, accords with godliness in hope of eternal life, which God who cannot lie promised before the time began. It's a guarantee. We already said it's reserved in heaven for you. And these first verses kept by the power of God. The Bible says you are sealed to the day of redemption. The Bible says that Christ has you in his hand and no one will pluck you out of his hands. And his father who's greater than him has you in his hand and no one will pluck you out of the father's hands. Well, they aren't going anywhere. They'll never leave you. They'll never forsake you. It is a guaranteed future for you. Acts 24, 15. I have hope in God that they themselves also accept that there will be a resurrection of the dead, both of the just and the unjust. There will be. Romans 15, 4. Whatever things were written before were written for our learning, that we might, through the patience and comfort of scriptures, might have hope. We have hope because we know in the scriptures, we can read Revelation, we see Jesus returning with the King of kings and Lord of lords. We see him being victorious, and we see us oh, oh, in heaven with him for eternity. Galatians 5.5, 5, For we through the Spirit eagerly wait for the hope of the righteousness by faith. For in Christ Jesus, neither circumcision nor uncircumcision avails anything, but faith working through love. So we eagerly wait for the hope of his righteousness because by faith we have been saved. By faith we have trusted in him, not of works, lest any man should both. Colossians 1.3, we give thanks to God and the Father of the Lord Jesus Christ, praying for you always. Since we heard of your faith in Christ Jesus and of your love for the saints, because of the hope which is laid up for you in heaven, of which you heard before in the word of the truth of the gospel. That's what the gospel is. God so loved the world and gave his only begotten son to whoever believes in him will not perish, but have everlasting life. It's a guaranteed absent from the body, present with the Lord. First Thessalonians 2.19 For what is our hope or joy or crown of rejoicing? Is it not even you? in the presence of our Lord Jesus Christ that is coming. Paul says to the Thessalonian church, 
you know, I may not see you again, but what is our hope? Is the hope that we'll all be in that presence with Jesus Christ, that long-term future, or maybe short-term future, is a guarantee. Proverbs 10, 28, the hope of the righteous will be gladness, but the expectation of the wicked will perish. So what do you expect to happen to you when you die? Well, the truth is this, he that hath the Son hath life. He that has not the Son hath not life. It all depends on your relationship with Jesus Christ. He says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one can come to the Father except through me. But anybody who can comes to Jesus is guaranteed to be with the Father. Proverbs 23, 17, do not let your heart envy sinners. Be zealous for the fear of the Lord all day, for surely there is a hereafter, and your hope will not be cut off. Surely there is a hereafter. All these verses that, that we talked about today have that word hope in it. And as we close our message, it's very simple. Uh, question, are you entering 2024 uh, leaning on that blessed hope? That, 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 that hope that is not a question mark kind of hope, but that positive hope that my sins have been forgiven and Christ lives within me and even through trials and tribulations that he is with me, he'll never forsake me. And that I know when this whole thing is over, unlike Job, I'm going to see my future is bright. I'm not going to say, well, I've seen all the good days, nothing but misery ahead of us. No, there's heaven ahead of you. Psalms 31, 24, be of good courage and he will strengthen your heart. All who hope in the Lord, place your hope in Christ. Psalm 42, 11, when you are cast down, O oh my soul, why are you cast down, O oh my soul? Why are you disquieted within me? Hope in God, for I shall yet praise him, the help of my countenance and my God. David says, you know what, even, even during those trials, I'm going to praise God. That's what Job did, even in early. But, you know, I didn't bring anything into this world. I'm not taking anything away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Again, I'm not going to accept the the bad along with the good. Psalm 146, 5. Happy is he who has the God of Jacob for his help, whose hope is in the Lord his God. Psalm 130, verse 5. I wait on the Lord. My soul waits. And in his word do I hope. Where is your hope today? Job had no hope because he thought everything was done for him. He thought he had nothing left in his life but to, to be uh, riddled with boils and die, not knowing there was something great around the corner. What's happening in 2024? This could be the year that our country is divided worse than it's ever been divided. It could be the year that God brings revival to America. It could be the year that Jesus returns. It could be the year that he takes me home. I don't know what's coming. But I know I have hope in my past because my sins are washed away. I have hope in my present because the Lord lives within me. And I have hope in the future because I know he's coming again. If you look at 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 13, he says, Therefore, because of all of this promise of, of salvation, gird up the loins of your mind, be sober, rest your hope fully upon the grace that is to be brought to you at the revelation of Christ Jesus. So rest your hope fully on the grace of God. As obedient children, not conforming to yourselves to the former lust as in your ignorance. In other words, repent, get rid of the sin. But as he who was called you was holy, you also be holy in all your conduct because it is written, be holy for I am holy. So live this year centered on the hope that is Christ Jesus. Be holy means separate for him, living for him. Um, and, and, and try not to get down in the rabbit holes of the world. 
because you want to make a difference. And when you start living that way, uh, with a living hope, uh, you begin to have an effect on those around you. 1 Peter 3.15, this is a great little verse and, and, and probably the, the best one of the day. Um, it says, sanctify the Lord God in your hearts and always be ready to give a defense to everyone who asks the reason for the hope that lies within you. That's an incredible little verse right there. Um, it says that people will ask you why you have hope. See, there, it's easy to, to be depressed. It's easy to be down. But if you have hope when it seems like things are hopeless, and by the way, if you really focus on those verses today, we do. And people begin to ask you, according to this scripture, so we can make a great difference in the world today simply by having a hope. The world doesn't understand. I close with this, Romans 15, 13. I'll let, let the word of God it, itself finish this lesson. It says, may the God of hope fill you with joy and peace in believing that you may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. May the God of hope fill you. See, this, this is, uh, it's not like, go out there and have some hope. It's going to God and say, God, I need this hope. There was a young man stricken and, and possessed by a demon in Mark chapter 9, and and they couldn't cast it out, and, and they went to the Father, and Jesus said, you know, uh, if you believe, nothing is impossible. And in Mark 9, 24, the Father responds, Lord, I believe. Lord, help my unbelief. And, and that's where we are today. I believe all of these things, and yet I still have a... a, a twinge of hopelessness that I live. I, I, I know God can do all these things. But will he do all these things? When I get to heaven, I can only imagine, am I going to get to heaven and, and say, yep, this is exactly what I thought, or am I going to get to heaven and go, ah, it's true. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing that you may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Romans 15, 13. Heavenly Father, help us to abound in hope in 2024. It's not something we can naturally do. It needs to be by the power of the Holy Spirit, Lord. Father, it uh, comes from believing everything you said to us in these verses today. So, Lord, we ask you to help our unbelief and let us be people of hope in 2024. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. Have a great New Year's Eve, and we will see you soon.